Okay, I'm a sexual health physician and I'm involved in sexual health medicine, which is a very well established specialized field of medicine. And it's concerned basically with um, healthy sexual relations, including freedom from sexually transmitted infections, uh, unplanned pregnancy, so we're looking at fertility regulation, uh, freedom from coercion, so we're looking at sexual assault, and physical and psychological discomfort associated with sexuality. Okay, I suppose you can actually define it as um, a person's sense of identification with either male or female sex. And this is as manifested in, in appearance, behavior, or other aspects of a person's life. So if you want to look at a definition, I think that that is what you would find a lot of dictionaries saying what gender identity actually means. I think to actually understand that, that you need to look at perhaps the concept of um, gender identity dys dysphoria or um, gender identity disorder. The other word for that is transsexualism. So in this situation there is a very strong and lasting cross-gender identification and persistent discomfort with one's biological sex okay, and one's gender sex. And this discomfort is really, really quite um, uh, a problem causing significant amount of distress and impairment in that person's functioning. So you can see in this situation one's identity is very, very different from the biological sex. To understand what determines gender identity, I think we need to go back to the definition of core gender identity. So it's that deep inner feeling that a child actually has um, about whether he or she is male or female. So there is a lot of uncertainty about where that comes from, whether it's because of um, a, a physical sort of uh, etiology from the body, whether it's mental, for example, from the hypothalamus region of the brain itself. Um, this debate in this determination of maleness and femaleness is actually shaped by many things. So it could include hormones, for example, testosterone and estrogen, or it could be the genes as well, um, um, which has been designed basically at conception. So really, there are lots and lots of possible reasons why this has occurred, but suffice to say that it is enforced at puberty and once are basically established, it's generally for life. I suppose you can describe it as perhaps a sexual attraction or feelings of one person to another. And there can be very many interpretations of that. Sexual orientation is, is evolving really. And when people are often ask, how many different sorts of sexual orientations do the people have? There are many. I the last time I counted, there were about 30. However, this will keep on changing. And I might just name you a few of those if, if you actually like. So other than the gay, lesbian, bisexual, or queer, or the LGBTQ, there are other sexual orientations like closeted, bi-curious, demisexual, uh, gynesexual, uh, polyamorous. These are amongst a few of how people identify themselves as. And watch the space, it will continue to actually involve as people feel more free to actually express their own sexual orientation and identity.